Nigerian Investment Promotion Council is on the verge of releasing a policy draft to the private sector of Nigeria as well as the economic team. We are joined by Mustafa Bello. He's the Executive Secretary of the Nigeria Investment Promotion Council. For more, a very good afternoon to you, Mustafa. Thank you so much for joining us. Could you kindly explain what you're planning to achieve with, this, uh, with these new rules as well as this new policy? Is this in any way a bid to attract more investment into Nigeria? Yes, well, let me thank you very much for the opportunity to make this presentation. The document actually uh, is, is, is modeled you know, to successful economies uh, like uh, India, like Malaysia, uh, where we found a variety of such uh, incentives introduced to the private sector and actually helped uh, drive faster inflow of foreign direct investment. And what the document actually has tried to look at first is the issue of immigration. Now, uh, you know immigration issues generally have uh, become major challenges to investors, you know, after shipping in their capitals uh, and, um, and equipment. Uh, they normally go through, you know, very, very difficult times trying to secure approvals of expatriate quota. What we have done in that document is to recommend minimum number of automatic expatriate quota slots. Uh, then we also look at the issue of technical skills that normally come to do installations. Now in that, again, we have made automatic slots for such skills that would come and do the installation and train the personnel locally uh, under temporary work permit. Uh, we similarly have seen what Ghanaians have done in terms of job creation. So within the same document, we have attached job creation to the expatriate quota slots that we have recommended to government to approve. So that uh, for each expatriate that is being brought into Nigeria, uh, there must be three minimum Nigerian graduates in the same field that must be employed by the same industry. Um, then we have introduced export expansion grant, which hitherto had been for export beneficiary companies only. Uh, what we have done uh, this time is to be able to attract real investment in those sectors that substitute for import. Now, you take, for example, the automobile industrial sector. For us to be able to fast track investment in that sector, um, we are now introducing the same benefit that an exporter gets for anyone who invests in the automobile industrial sector that will really uh, generate the kind of vehicles that the economy will require. Um, we have similarly uh, listed such sectors as the steel industrial sector, uh, cotton, uh, farming, including backward integration, uh, we have also looked at investment in areas like cement, like um, sugar, wheat, and um, um, you know, such other sectors of importance to us in, in agriculture. We have looked at the gas to liquid. We have also looked at uh, chemicals and fertilizers. You know, all these because we invest huge resources per annum to import them. We are now incentivizing such investments with benefits in that the export expansion grant beneficiary companies uh, normally get. Uh, this is to help fast track investment in those sectors that are key to the growth of our economy. You've touched we have on. Similarly, introduced for the first time um, what we call state enterprise st status. Uh, which we have found you know, very useful to the Indians you know, when they first wanted to open their economy. Uh, what we have done here is to a, set a okay. threshold of about $15 billion net worth for a wholly Nigerian-owned company or substantially a owned Nigerian company more than 50%. Must have, I just such want a company will be entitled Yes. You've touched on a number of sectors that you'll be uh, looking at, uh, but when it comes to when, the, the, when these uh, rules will be implemented, when can we expect these rules to be implemented? No, what, what we are doing currently is we are still consulting with the beneficiaries of this. We have uh, spoken to a variety of those in the private sector uh, that we believe are key in uh, getting these uh, you know, incentives passed by government. 
uh, and, and some of whom actually are members of the economic management team of Mr. President. Now, the next thing we intend to do is to go and sell this in a public presentation, which we intend to do, uh, I think, somewhere in October or November this year. And once we get it endorsed by that wider presentation, then the next step is to now get through a process that will get government to be able to approve it. And if there are those areas that we need to make improvements in terms of the appropriate legislation, then our National Assembly will be involved in such a process. And once we get that done and we get the document gazetted, it becomes available for the utilization you know, by the private sector. We'd just like to get an update on the non-oil uh, sector's foreign direct investment at uh, this stage. We know that uh, investment has really been flowing into the telecom sector, uh, but where are investors looking at at this stage in Nigeria to actually channel their funds? Well, um, the, actually, the non, you know, the focus of government is, is, is to drive growth in the non-oil sector, to encourage investment in the non-oil sector, uh, particularly uh, agriculture, which provides, currently provides uh, a lot of employment and, and is still in the hands of the subsistence farmer. Uh, so, so government is, is, is rolling out policies now that are specific to agriculture uh, by the current Minister of Agriculture, which aims at is, is looking at the entire chain from end to end, you know, making sure that value is added rather than export of the primary commodities. You know, and through that, we'll be able to create a lot of wealth, enhance the performance of the economy, and actually you know, uh, improve on uh, those sectors that have remained stagnant, that have relationship with, with agriculture. The other sector that government is really working very hard in driving investment is the mining sector. We have over 34 mining minerals identified in the economy. But unfortunately, up to now, we have not been able to attract substantial investment in the mining sector. Of recent, our trip to Australia has revealed that there is indeed a lot of interest by the Australians in looking at the mining sector. They have come up with certain proposals in terms of improvement on the existing legislation so that that will enable them to move in huge resources to be able to see how we can at least uh, begin to uh, create value in terms of the mining minerals that we have in over 36, I mean 34 uh, number in huge commercial quantities.